This is George Evans. I grew up in Louisiana. I live here in Cherry Hill now. My final rank in the Navy was uh, Chief Warrant Officer, uh, W-4. And, um, and what years were you in the service? Uh, June 59 to February 83. Which is... Uh, 23 of years, 20? 7 months, 29 days, and 10 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Ten hours? You sure? But no yeah. Minutes? Well, you get sworn in at two in the afternoon, and you're out at midnight. So that's where the ten hours comes from. <laughs> Great. So, and we just see, I twenty nine days. Strangely enough, all enlisted people are discharged on the thirtieth of the month. I mean, retired on the thirtieth of the month. Officers are retired on the first of the month. So that's where the twenty nine days come from. Great. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about your life before? Service? Yeah. You know, life before the service was pretty much non existent. You're talking uh, Louisiana in the 40s and 50s. Uh, I always say we live so far back in the woods they had to bring in sunlight. <laughs> uh, there was. But, you know, as a kid, you know, I, obviously I thought it was a good life. I had no idea how, what it was until I grew up and left. Uh, the town I grew up in had a population of about. Uh, 400 people, and uh, it's even less now. <laughs> had one traffic light, and, uh, two cotton gins, and a post office, and two stores, and that was about it. Uh, went to school in, uh, in the parish seat or county seat of New York, which was about nine miles away. So, busing was, and people think busing is something new. <laughs> Everybody was bused back in those days. I mean, the town wasn't big enough to have a school. So then what made you um, want to go into the service? Believe it or not, when I was a kid growing up, well, growing up during World War II, I mean, the military was, you know, it was the thing. You know, uh, there was an army base nearby, Fort Polk, so you always saw soldiers around. Um, and even back in the Bible, there were soldiers. I mean, it seemed like you know, the thing to do. But you ended up in the Navy. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. I went. I had. Uh, I had t taken the. Uh, I'd gone down with a buddy of mine who was talking about joining the Army. I mean, uh, the Navy. And we just took the test, and we were 16 years or so. And um, I had gotten into a fight with a kid who later became my brother-in-law. And I decided if I don't get out of town, somebody's going to get hurt, and it's not going to be me. So I went down. I was going to join the Air Force. The Air Force recruiter wasn't there. I just went right across the hall and joined the Navy. It was I escaped into the Navy. <laughs> so after you um, you enlisted and went where for for boot camp? Well, I enlisted uh, June '59. I went to boot camp and, uh, basically. 2nd of June, the 3rd of June I was in San Diego at boot camp, um, and boot camp I think at the time was nine weeks long. I got out of boot camp in mid-August of 59, and from there I went to uh, Treasure Island, and I thought Treasure Island was just something from a story, but it's, it's an actual island in uh, San Francisco Bay, and that's where the uh, World's Fair was held, I think it was 1939, something like that. It's the, uh, you know, the connection point between uh, the bridges that go from San Francisco to Oakland, sure, there's, Oakland there's, an island, there's a landmass there. Treasure Island is part of that landmass. Uh, lots of people know it as YPI, Ibera Island. And it's it's a Navy facility? It was until recently. It was, it was I, I suppose that during World War II it had guns in it and it was heavily defended, something like that, because it was the entrance to San, uh, San Francisco Bay. Sure. But uh, when I went there, it was uh, a school command. Electronic school, radar school, that kind of stuff. So, is that what, is that the job you were trained for? No, nah, I flunked out of school in the third week. <laughs> but uh, I got I went to sea, and uh, about the first day out there, I realized chipping paint on deck in the cold wind and rain is not the way to go. So I started talking to this guy that worked in a little room uh, right near where I was working. And I used to talk to him all the time. I had uh, put in a request to go to a sonar group. 
because they seemed to be easy job and they had clean clothes all the time. And that request got disapproved. But the guy I had been talking to says, I'll take him. And he turned out to be a fire controlman. Okay. And fire controlman doesn't have anything to do with firefighting. <coughs> it's gun fire control. Okay. So I ended up work, uh, learning to work on radars. And that was in, I got to the ship in the 31st of October. And about March, I put in a request to go back to school. And in June, I started back to basic electronics again, or weapon systems. There's no difference between weapon systems, electronics, and any other electronics. 19 weeks of basic electronics, <coughs> I went to advanced schools. Uh, I was uh, radars, computers, and that kind of thing. Uh, so I was basically learning a gunfire control system. And eventually, I became more radar specialized. Computers in those days were pretty much filled up half of this room. It was a big mechanical monster. Um, and no one, you know, no one really thought anything about computers. They were just a box that sat there. And so were you in, involved with, with aiming the, the guns or? Uh, well, let me tell you how a system works. Oh, okay. okay. Um, it's I ran into some kids and they thought you shoot planes down with radar. You do not. What happens is you send out a signal, okay? The signal hits whatever is out there and bounces back. And that's how you detect targets. If from that target detection, once you hit, once you get two hits, I mean, two radar hits on the target, okay, you know just about everything there is to know about. You know exactly where it's located, what the direction of travel is. Once you know that, you can predict where the target is going to be. So it's like when you're out duck hunting, you know, you don't shoot at the duck, you shoot where the duck is going to be. Okay, that's what the fire control system does. It points the gun. You don't. No one physically aims the gun. The system well, points the gun automatically. And you just close the fire key and it goes boom, boom, boom. So, so at, at that point you learned that and then you were assigned to a ship? Yeah. yeah that, was, uh, that was my second ship that I was assigned to at that time. Uh, both were, were destroyers. Uh, destroyers have a crew of about, I guess, have a crew of about 250 people. So this is in the early 60s now we're talking about, correct? Yeah, this is uh, mid-61. Okay, so we're, we're, there's no wars going on. No. Korea's over. Yeah. Vietnam's yet to start. Yeah. Well, no one knew about Vietnam. It was still called Indochina in those days. So uh, are you, what are you doing? I mean, where are you going? Where are you stationed? Um, the first ship I was stationed in Long Beach, California. And that was good because I had relatives that lived in Compton, so I'd go and drive them crazy every weekend. On the second ship, I was uh, I was in San Diego, um, and I just did what all the other kids did. You know, I just hung around. Uh, as a matter of fact, most of the time I went up went up to Compton on the weekends because it was only 125 miles. Just catch the bus on Friday and go up and come back on some, uh, on Sunday. Uh, just hanging out. And Doing nothing, being useless, you know, drinking beer illegally, and all that stuff. But it sounds like you're enjoying it. Oh, hey, it was, I was the kind of sailor that every sailor thinks it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, by that, I think you're telling me you're not married at this point. I don't know. In uh, in '61, I was 19 years old, not even thinking about getting married. As a matter of fact, I did get engaged. But uh, she was in the Navy too, and she got sent to Pensacola, Florida, and I was in San Diego. And uh, we just decided that it's, it's not a practical thing to do. So after we broke up, I came back and, uh, and re enlisted. I put in a request to re enlist, and they disapproved my request. <laughs> and I said, Why? Said, well, you're just doing this to get even with your girlfriend. I go, Are you out of your mind? I was like, Going to get even with her? Well, you never. You never listen to us when we try to talk to you about re-enlistment. Well, I don't need a re-enlistment speech. I came in to do 20. So I went, I re-enlisted, and I went to uh, advanced electronic school. And when I say advanced, I'm talking about In the first week of school, they're teaching you basic math, okay? One plus one equals three. <laughs> Actually, one plus one equals two. And at the end of three weeks, you're doing uh, rate of change, differential calculus, slopes and all that stuff. 
And in the military, when you go to school, that's what you do eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, period. Okay? Not including lunch time. And in, in basic electronics, they gave us a radio in a box. It was just a box of parts. You put it together, it becomes a radio, and that's how you learn receivers. Okay? In advanced electronics school, they gave us a, a box and had a big picture tube in it. You know? And it was a TV. And by the end of six weeks, you put that together, you now know display systems and sound systems and everything there is about TVs. Okay? And basically, that's all we did to it. You know, just put it together, oh yeah, that's how it works. So, it's, it's, instead of just including learning basic theory or advanced theory, you learn practical application. Basically, we come out of that school being junior engineers. We could get it, it would be the equivalent of uh, second year college engineering. No, way past that. Um, when I retired, I came here and I was going to school, and I think in six weeks in electronics school, we covered what we did in the first week in the Navy. Uh, you go there to learn something, you, you learn that. <coughs> yeah.